Welcome back to another episode of Faith Talk with your host, Akriva, and I am delighted to once again be in your company. Tonight I have joining me a very special guest. Uh, she was with me before, so she's no stranger to the show. But now this time, instead of being on the TV screen, she's with me on the couch. I'm not going to say much about her, but she's the founder that I know of I Am Queen Magazine. magazine. Yes. See, there it goes. I, I, I'm going to let Elle tell you all about her. Welcome to the couch, Elle. It's nice to be here, Kriva. Yes, it's so good to... And you know, I want for the viewers to know, mm -hmm. this is our first time physically yes. being together. But we had such a powerful session in some years ago on the screen because you were not here in town. So tell the people a little bit about Elle. Well, my name is Elle Clark. I am an author, the founder of I Am Queen Magazine and ECM Global. I'm a mother and a wife, and I love Jesus. That's about all I can say. Period. I, I like that, Elle. I like that because, you know, Elle has like, um, Elle is like the CEO of a conglomerate. She does everything, everything. But Elle, let's just dive straight in there. I want to take my viewers back mm -hmm. to some years ago when I first met you and we had a faith talk. Just for those that may not have gotten, you know, the, the drift of, of our conversation due to the, you know. Tell us your story. Take us back. You were once a police officer that worked in the investigative department, mm -hmm. correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at some part in your life, something happened to you that was not good. Let's go back there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I was a police officer and have been a police officer for 12 years. I can't remember exactly which year um, in my tenure I was at the time, but a few guys that I would have charged with a crime broke into my home and raped me. Now, during that time, it was very, I don't even know what to say. It was, it was a hard time for me because you have to understand that I was a police officer that investigated rape, but now found myself now sitting on the opposite side of the table. Now my colleagues were now investigating my rape. Yeah. And so it was a very difficult time. During, the, during that time, my oldest daughter, she was five months old, and I could remember one of the guys that was in the house with, because she was crying so much, was lifting her and shaking her and saying, hush, baby, hush, baby, hush. In that moment, I thought I, was, I, I thought I was dead because you have to understand that some of the guys that entered my home were known murderers. They were known to the police. So I thought that was my last day. I remember saying Psalms 23 and praying the Lord's prayer and saying, Lord, please forgive me for all of my sins because if tonight going to be my last night, I need to ensure that I die in you yes. and with you. Yes. And so God would have spared us and um, they didn't harm my daughter, thank the Lord. And after that situation, I went through a lot of things in my mind because now I have to go back to work where they investigated my model, where they collected my underwear, where they saw me in the most vulnerable stage of my life. And how do I keep a good face knowing that everyone knows what I went through? Um, I had thoughts of suicide, but the only thing that kept me anchored here was my daughter because I said, you know, what if you decide to take your life today? How, who's going to take care of your daughter? I experienced molestation as a child. Are you going to be that selfish to take your life and leave your innocent baby here to fend for herself? And that was my anchor. That was the thing that kept me going. She was the thing that kept me, you know, believing that there was going to be better. At the time I wasn't saved. And so even though I wasn't saved, I, I knew of God because I grew up in the church. And so I still held on to the things that my grandmothers taught me and the things that I learned in church, but I still didn't give my life to God at that point. I remember after the incident, I was taking a shower and I was like, why did you allow this to happen to me, God? I was crying, I was crying, and I heard the voice of God for the very first time in my life. And he said, I allowed it because you have the ability to bear it and share it. Wow, that's powerful. I almost cursed God in that moment because I was like, God, couldn't you have allowed me to just get in an accident or buck right. my toe? Why did you allow this to happen? And as I fast forward to the day, yes. I understand what that meant. You, I allowed you to walk through it because you have the ability to bear it and share it. Yes. And so I wrote my book, How I Escaped the Prison of Rape, The Journey to Total Freedom. And when I released that book, I was asking God all the questions because I, I was already writing because writing is something that has been a passion of mine from when I was in the fifth grade. And I was already writing my life story and the Lord said, no, I don't want you to release your life story. I just need you to release the piece of the, about the rape. And I was like, Lord, are you sure? 
He said, yes. I went to my husband because, you know, God is not a God of confusion. And I said, you know, I believe God wants me to release the power of the rape. You know, what he said, okay, that's fine. If God tells you to do it, then do it. When I released the book online, I got so many emails and responses from women who said that I never told my mother that I was raped. I didn't wow. tell my daddy I was molested. I didn't tell my husband I was raped. I got, um, there were women that reached out to me who are having issues in their marriage as it relates to sex. Yes. Because they haven't dealt with the trauma from the rape and the molestation. And it is because they continue to keep it on the inside and their partners don't know. Their husbands are trying to figure out, you know, what's going on, what's wrong with me. But it's simply because they haven't dealt with the trauma from the past. Because you have to understand the molestation and rape will mess up your mind as it relates to anything as it relates to sexual intercourse because it was a problem for me i was not a person that really liked sex mm. i did it because i thought that was the thing that was expected right right but not because i enjoyed it and i literally had to and it took a long time and i'm still getting over it to wow. release the trauma yes. in the area of sex to i went to ask you that it. yes to i went to ask it. that yes like mm. how how did your husband cope with mm. you know you being a, a victim of rape Mm -hmm. And you being able to, you know, have sex and, and enjoy intimacy with your spouse. It was rough because even though he knew my story, it's, you know, you know it's we're married. And as far as he's concerned, you know, I'm not the person that assaulted you. Why do you still feel this fear? Yes, but it yes, really had nothing yes. to do with him. It's because of the trauma that was attached to that. And the way that I saw sex was something that a man used to take advantage and overpower a woman. And so that's why it wasn't something that. I really enjoyed. I just did it just because it was expected. Yeah. And so it took me a long time to undo that. And I'm still undoing that because there are triggers. You know, you can get over and be delivered from, from something, but that sometimes it, there are things that happen that trigger you. Like if someone, if, he sh if my husband shouts at me, that may trigger me yes. into believing that this now is something that you're going to use to take advantage of me. And so it took a long time. And this is why I tell women all the time, you have to deal with that. You have to talk to somebody about it you have to release that because in releasing that you'll be able to see all of the things that you are doing in your life that may be maybe attached to that for me i use shopping i shop so much like i bought i don't know i wow. gucci this david Herman this yes, yes, don't even yes, that yes, yes because what i was doing was trying to buy back the value they took from me oh and so there's always telltale signs when someone when you see people doing things in excess there's a problem you drinking in excess there's, there's a, a problem. problem. Yes. You shopping in excess, there's a problem. Anything in excess yes. is a red flag for you to know that someone that you love or someone you may be close to is going through something. Anything you do in excess. And that's something that the Lord revealed to me. I use shopping to cover. That was my coping me mechanism. Yes. Other people, some people that went through what I went through, went to an alternative lifestyle because of the trauma Absolutely. that they experienced. And it is those telltale signs that they may not tell you, but if you love somebody, pay attention to them. If that's not something that's in there that they normally do, then you know that that's something they're going through, that they're trying to use that to cope instead of actually dealing with it. Wow. Let me ask a question, Al, for the mm -hmm. viewers. So after you experienced the rape and mm -hmm. had to go to court and, and, mm -hmm. and you know, deal with all of that, mm -hmm. um, the last time we spoke, I think that your the person that did that to you mm -hmm. was alive at the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you remember on the show, you know, we really... Uh, that kind of made me angry if you, if you go back to it. Mm -hmm. But today, he's not alive. No, he's not. Um, he did. He continued with his criminal lifestyle, and unfortunately, he someone murdered him. Mm -hmm. Murdered him. Yeah. As a man lives, as so, he lives, so shall he die. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's sad because you know. But God is now using that. Mm -hmm. I, I love what you said earlier. God said the voice that said that you were able to bear yeah, it and share it and share it. Mm -hmm. And you, that, that was therapeutic for you. Like the more you release, the more you feel better about it. Yes. Um, but what God is doing to you now, El, what I have observed is now you have become a voice mm -hmm. in the Bahamas for so many women. I mean, all over the world, but more so your country. Mm -hmm. um, and, and because like you said, so many people are not talking about it. And it's women in all levels, I'm sure, mm -hmm. that you've encountered women mm -hmm. on the highs and the lows yes. that have been through it and have not. How has that been going? Because I, I saw where doors have opened and you begin to sit in, I think it was cabinet, was that Senate. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. the Senate. Mm -hmm. And you were able to speak How's that been going? And tell us a little bit about that. 
Wow. Since I've returned home, which I truly believe is prophetic. Yes. The Lord has been, that was, that there's one particular lady. She knew about my story from, I lived in the U S and every time she would say, Linnell, it's time for you to speak. Ella, it's time for you to speak. Ella, it's time for you to speak. And every time there's a rape that happened in the Bahamas, she would message me, Ella, it's time for you to speak. Wow. Ella, it's time for you to speak. Wow. And I would never, I would never say anything about it. When I returned home, she's the text has never stopped. Ella, it's time for you to speak. Ella, it's time for you to speak. And I said, and every time a rape happens, she does the same thing every time. Okay. She say, you got to speak. You're the only person who's speaking up about it. And so one day she calls me and she says, I need you to be at a meeting. Um, with the ministers and you need to be here by nine o'clock. She called me at 8 a.m. And I was getting my children ready. She said, you need to be here for nine o'clock. Like this time she didn't tell me. She didn't like ask me to speak. She said, you need to get here. And when I got there, that's where they were tabling. They were talking about the sexual, the gender-based violence act. And they were doing a lot of discussions about that. And so that was the first time she just wanted to get me in the room among the people who were handling issues of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so I went, I rushed, I went. She called me again. I still didn't speak. Elle, I need you to be in this meeting. Every time she would call me, I need you to be in this meeting. I need you to be here. I need you to be here. Until one day I said, you know what? I said, God, I'm, I think it's time for me to speak. I think the door, it, it started to knock, you know, it was knocking probably like one month here, two months here, but now it's knocking every day. It knocking every day, and I realized this is you talking to me. And I said, God, I'm going to speak up. Since then, I have I was invited to Shanique's show, and I was able to share my story on Shanique's show. Yes. And being on Shanique's show and um, Bahamas at Sunrise opened a lot of doors as Amen. well as brought a lot of women to me. I'm talking about women in the corporate, my in God. the corporate world, yes. who've gotten raped that didn't report it, have been told their husbands, trying to understand how to get through it. Through it, you have wives who are saying that they're having issues having sex with their husband, and as they know it's because of the rape, but they can't tell it. I just want to pause you right there as you talk. I just want to pause you right there. Mm -hmm. What is the cause of people not wanting to share? As it relate in the corporate world, I mean, because no one would know, it, right? It it makes them to to them it makes them feel weak, especially in a male dominated area. In mm -hmm. some of the positions that these women hold, they feel weak. Um, they feel like everybody's going to say that they're the cause. It was they're they're the problem. They weren't raped. They wanted it, and so to get rid of or for them not to sit through that shame they prefer to keep it to themselves and they definitely don't want to tell their husbands because they already work in areas that are male dominated they don't want their husband to think maybe you know maybe you led the person on there's a lot of things a lot of things that they had go that these ladies have gone through their mind as to why they don't and then they don't want to seem like they're a victim especially being in a male dominated area because they're already thriving and pushing for positions that men are also pushing for so they don't want to seem weak so they don't want to have that 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 stigma attached to them as though they're a victim of rape so uh -huh. that the stigma i think is one of the most major things as to why they don't want to speak up about it but at the same time they want the help to get through it wow have you ever encountered a situation, Elle, and even with you being mm -hmm. a, a rape victim mm -hmm. and having daughters, mm -hmm. what are some of the things that you would say to them? I mean, you know, I see you have a, mm -hmm. we're going to talk about those <laughs> girls, those beautiful girls, mm -hmm. especially your oldest daughter. What are some of the nuggets that you will share with them as they grow now to look out for? I remember when Jalen found out, when my oldest daughter found out about the incident, I remember I was recording the audio for the book and I think she was about... 13 of yeah, I think she's about 13 and I was recording it early in the morning and so she came downstairs and she was like mommy That happened to you because oh, no. she didn't know about it yet because right. I didn't think it was time to tell her and I was like yes, baby it happened to me and she was like like she couldn't, she she didn't know what to say, and I tell and I told her I said God, I said God working it out, God is working out with mommy. But as she got older and as they got older, you know some of the things I tell them. First of all, it is a generational curse because this is something that happened in my family for, you know, a few generations, mm -hmm. and no one spoke up about it. I remember when I showed my grandmother my book, she was furious because she said, Linnell, why would you put your face on this book? Now everybody's going to know what happened. And I said, 
I, I tell her, I said, listen, God told me that I yes. had to put a face to it. Yes. I, because with, as it relates to rape victims, they are always concealed for their protection. Yes. Right? But it does them harm because no one ever hears their side of the story. We only hear the side of the suspect or, or the person is who is being accused. And he said, I didn't do that. She came on to me. And that's the only story we ever hear. We never hear a side of the story. And I think it does a disservice to her because she doesn't have a voice. And so God said, no, you're going to put your face to it because you're going to give a voice to for those who can't speak for themselves. And my Grammy did not approve of it, but I told her I had to do what the Lord told me to do. And I'm so glad that I did. Yes. A lady came up to me not too long ago and she said, El, I'm so glad you put your face on this book. Because if I just, if I just had the words, you know, Am I still hiding behind what I'm Right. Hiding? And then, you know, some people put the, you know, the, like a the mask tape. Over say, right. Are you still ashamed of it? Wow. When you're, t when you're trying to, when you're trying to teach people or trying to tell people that they are able to walk through it, are you still ashamed? Are you still hiding behind what happened to you? Are you afraid for people to know what you went through? It was not my fault. It wasn't something that I asked for. And I don't care if a woman is dressed half naked. If she says no, no is means no. no. Yes, yes. No means no. And that's another problem we have. Some women believe that because they were in the club, right? If they was in a club and they was drinking and then someone took advantage of them and raped them, they should they don't they can't report it because people are gonna say, Well, you was drunk or you asked for it or you was dressed a certain way. And that's another reason why a lot of them don't come forward as well. Because they are afraid that people are going to assume that because of the way that they were dressed, they wanted that and now they're crying wolf. And and want that person to be arrested. That is another reason. The whole mindset as it relates to rape has to change. Rape is not is one of those things that it seems as though we don't take it seriously because we look at it as just sex. Right. But it's, but not, it's, just that. it's, it's, it's not just sex. It's not just sex. No. I know. It's not I, just sex. It's literally you're stealing. You're taking something that does not belong to you because we look at it as sex, which is something that is natural. We try, we we kind of push aside the violence side of that because in order for you to rape somebody, if they don't want it. I mean, you have to hold them down and do all these other extra things so that you can have them in a position that they are submitting to what you're doing for them. It is wrong. It's not just sex. And we have to remove the blindfolds from our eyes from seeing it that way because it is a violation. Once you're raped, you don't feel safe. You that's don't it. know where to go. You don't feel like, because when I went through, that's why I had to write this book as well. When I went through the rape, there was no one that was able to tell me anything. I went to the therapist. I went to the counselor and I did all the things that they told me to do, but none of those people were, I went to my pastor as well, but none of them were able to tell me, give me a real answer. Y'all didn't walk through that. So I understand what you're telling me book wise and Bible wise, but you didn't walk through it. Hey, that's you didn't it. walk through it. So how was, how was your, how is your, your advice hasn't even been tested. Like, how do I know what you're saying to me is even work going to right, work? Right. Because you didn't experience it. And even if you told someone that you still don't have the evidence to say that their advice even worked. But because I walked through it and I know how alone I was, I was alone. I, listen, I was crying out for help with the things that I did. Like I said, I was shopping and doing all these things, spending all kind of money on these frivolous things because... I had no one to talk to, no one who I could relate to. And so that's why it's so important for me to share my story because women need to know that someone got out. Yes, Elle. I got out. Yes. I got on the other side, not by my might though, but by the might of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit because it wasn't until I gave my life to God that he started to really unwrap all of this and he showed me how this was a generational curse and how no one spoke up. My and God. I didn't find out until after that, there were that persons there was in my family you, correct. That, that went through it and they just pushed it aside like it was another day and they kept on walking on with their lives. And I was like, I can't do this. I have four daughters. I cannot stay silent. I have to speak up against this enemy. Yes. I have to break the generation. Yes. Because I don't want them to have to walk through what I went through of what, what my generation's past went through. Yes. I say, so I have to be the one to stand up. And I put God to the test. He says, Lord, I am going to stand up boldly for you. So I expect my children to be protected. That's right. Because of my obedience. Amen. And so... Rape and molestation is something that's happening all over the world. It's happening in the Bahamas, a lot of cases. And I don't want us to get sidetracked and think like it's just another day. Like like when we see crime now, when things happen, we just look at it. Oh, that happened yesterday. Oh, 
Don't worry about that. No, this mess up a community because you have to understand a broken woman, a broken child is, a child is molested. That child never gets the help she needs. She becomes a broken woman. She's going to raise broken children. My and it's going to continue to cycle over yes. and over. And everything begins with the home. We're wondering why our society is the way it is because we have so many people that are broken, yes. that are walking. I'm talking about they carrying trauma from they was two and three and four and five, but no one, they have no outlet to really a real outlet, not just someone who's talking. We need someone who lived this, who yes. walked through this, and who's on the other side. So when we look at rape, when we look at crime, we can't just look at it as something that oh that happens every day. No, that's the beginning of the destruction of a whole yes. society yes. because you have a bunch of broken people walking around trying to make broken marriages work, having broken children, and then the cycle just continue to repeat over and over and over. And so this is why it is so important for me to share my story, especially the young children, and to let them know that they can that they can dream that just because you may have grow, grown up in a certain environment that does not mean that that's the environment that that's you can right. stay in that's right. you can branch out God has allowed through this story for me to go to the US and speak yes. and, and do conferences yes. and a lot of different things through this story that I thought was about to take me out but then he continuously reminds me of the statement that he told me in the shower you have the ability to bear, bear it, it and share it I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. And through that one book is opening doors. I never thought that my name would ever be called in the Senate. That my I would God ever get the chance to speak. And I'm like, God, God, this is only you. My God. This is only you. It's only you. And this is why I encourage everyone, tell your story. Yes. Write your story. Yes. You think it's insignificant, but there are so many people who are waiting waiting for your story. I can't, everybody's not going to be delivered from my story, but your story is different from mine. Yes, you may have a rape story. Oh, Ellen, write the rape book. No, your story, you're called to a people. Yes. I'm not called to everyone you're called to and likewise. And so your story is important. Write the vision down and make it clean. Yes. The Bible declares that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the by word. the word of your testimony. Yes. So we need your testimony with the blood of the my lamb God. so that we can be delivered. Yes. We have to write our stories. Listen, this is history. You are literally setting the foundation for your children and your children's children. Yes. This is about this is about legacy. Okay. This is about you breaking generational curses. This is about you standing up and you saying what God has put on the inside of you. He didn't allow you to walk through that and live just so that you can just carry on with your life. He allowed you to walk through that and live so that you will be able to help others to get through what Come they on. are walking through. I had no one to help me. Oh no one who was willing. And there were many women I found out later that was raped that was in my stratosphere but was too fearful My to speak God. because of the shame that society places on women who have experienced rape. I have no shame because I am in Christ. And because I'm in Christ, I'm a new creation. That's right. And so all things have passed away and behold, oh, all things, things have become new. Amen. And so that story, that's that's not my story. That is God's story. That's his yes. redemption plan, his redemptive plan for my life. And not only my life, but for yours as well. Your story has power. Don't believe it's insignificant. You are here for a purpose. God placed you here for a purpose and because of that he needs you to speak he needs you to share your story so that he can get the glory and others can be set free man l that's a man look here that's an amen we ain't finished yet though but i like what you said because i was talking to somebody uh a week ago and i was there was like i'm trying to find my purpose and i said to them i said you won't believe it your purpose is sitting right there with you it's all it's right there with you but what happened is shame is around it it's the thing that caused hurt mm -hmm. it's the thing that brought pain mm -hmm. i'm telling you it's that that's why faith talk is there I have to go through something yeah. in order to open my what? My mouth. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you know, that, that infertility thing was very, very quiet. No one wanted to yeah. talk about it. Mm -hmm. When I went through it, I felt as if I was the only L, mm -hmm. Bahamian, yeah. that was struggling. That's how I felt. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, on my level, I can understand what you're talking about. I'm not a rape victim, but the same thing happens mm -hmm. in that community. Everything is hush, hush. Yeah. Don't say it. And then I spoke to a guest as well. I don't know if Jewel those remember, but she came on the couch and she talked about how uh, she was told not to say anything. Wow. So she was molested by her grandfather and told not to say anything. Wow. It's the family secret. Yeah. And so now sitting with you, Ellen, you saying it, mm -hmm. it brings me back to sitting with that guest mm -hmm. and putting your face on a book is bold. Like this is, L, this is truly bold. Mm -hmm. This has to be God led because, like yeah. I said, when you see the things, even on the TV, mm -hmm. the victim face is being hidden. Yeah. You know, they're, they're doing it, they're sharing the story, but how do I know that's not something sitting there and that's, that's fake? 
I need to be able to what? Relate. Yeah. I need to be able to relate. So this is powerful because this book truly, L, I mean, just sitting here looking at it, I could see and just hearing you, this has opened many doors and more doors to come. But are you all going to go in the, the, the primary schools? Because, you know, molestation happens from a very early age with uh, kids just being told that it's okay. I'm just touching it. It's okay right there. So are you going to be dealing with the kids in the primary school as well? I'm working along the crisis center right now and they've prepared a program to go into some of the government schools and hopefully next year will be a, more schools will be added to that and like you said you know we have gotten so accustomed to abuse um if a little boy hits you that yes. means he likes you yes that means he likes you so now we've gotten so if your boyfriend hits you that means he loves you no that's not the case. And that's why it's so important for us to have exposure because exposure expands. Yes. When you realize, when you sit in your home and, and there may be some things happening that you may see as normal, but if you go to the house next door, you would realize that something just may be wrong mm. in my house. And that's why it is so important for us to start at that level, to teach children and to show children, listen, abuse is never okay. It isn't okay if a girl hits a boy. It's not okay if a boy hits a girl. That's right. And we got to rewire our minds and get ourselves thinking about the right way to do things to have respect for people That's for it. kindness That's and it. we see so many things going on in our country right now and it's simply because listen we first of all there's no fear of god and if you don't have that foundation of christ where are you going to go because i know my grandmother's generation they established the foundation of christ in my life even though i wasn't interested at the time but they took me to church they prayed for me they ensured that i knew christ but I'm not so sure about my generation. Are we now, because we're about to be the grandmothers, are we going to be the praying grandmothers? Have we laid the foundation so that our children's children can have something to run back to? Because yes. if you have no foundation, That's it. where are they going to run back to? They, they have nothing to go back to. I always, I love the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son had a foundation. Yes. He had a foundation. And because when he finally got got to himself, he knew he had somewhere to go back to. But if these children have no foundation of Christ, to go. where are they going? Yes. Where are they going? So now my generation, we are now about to be the praying grandmothers. You're right. Are you going to pick up the mantle? Right. Are you going to be praying for your children and your grandchildren? Yes. Or will prayer be lost? And that's a scary society to be in. A God. prayerless society is a scary society. I wouldn't want to live in a society that's prayerless. And so that's why it is so important for us to do do it at that level, at you know the kindergarten level, as our children are growing, because we know that by the age of five, I think they say that that's when the child is ready to develop their personality, yes. and that's basically who they're going to be. And so it's important for us to get them as young as possible. And so we're going to uh, uh, meet myself along with the with the crisis center. Mm -hmm. I'm also working along with FOAM, Family of All Murdered Victims, as well, yes. um, as relates to helping women who would have walked through rape and molestation as well. That is powerful. And she's doing a really good job yes. too, especially with the murder yes. families of the murdered victims. Yes, and that, that, that calls for boldness again, yes. because it's, it's, you know, people are going to be looking for you because you're trying to open cases back up and yes. you, you're still, but we need that. We need people that are going to stand up yes. and say enough is enough mm -hmm. and we need change. We need that in our society. And the thing about it, before I came on the show, I said, Lord, what do you want me to, what am I going to be talking about in the show? And you know what he said? He said, it's going to be wrapped around the pain of purpose. Yes. Because even with Ms. Gibson, who was in charge of foam, she had to experience the death of multiple people in her life for her to push this organization that she has right now to be able to help people who would have lost um, their loved ones. That's, once enough. again, that's purpose. That's purpose. It's but attached that's to the, pain. It's, it's attached to your pain. Yes. God is not going to allow you to walk through something he's going to use. I love Romans 8 and 28 that says all, all things, things. Go all ahead. things, good, yes. bad, ugly, all things work together for That's good, it. for them that love the Lord and are That's called it. according to his purpose. And yes. so once you give him your story, he will use it for his oh, glory. Yes, he would. And you will be able to see, wow, how did something so nasty that happened to me, so bad, yes. has opened doors for me to be sitting in seats, governmental seats. How? 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 Only God. Only God. Only yeah. God. Only God. Only and you God. know, people, I, I was telling someone the other day, you know, and even as early as today, everything that I went through in life, mm -hmm. I don't regret it. Yeah. I had to make the wrong turns. I yeah. had to do that. That was necessary yeah. for today. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. God is going to turn that bad thing around for your good. Yeah. But you have to now submit and say, God, what is your will here? What yeah. would you have me to do? Yeah. And so this is this is powerful. And you and I together, that's, that's extremely powerful. Yeah. But on another note, Elle, 
with you writing, because uh, as you could see, everybody, Al brought about 10 books or eight <laughs> books here. She's a writer. Mm -hmm. She writes for adults and for kids. You are also pushing people into writing. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that, making people authors and helping people walk through their purpose in, through a book. Well, I look at these as books, but they're more than books. This is a ministry. Yes. It's a ministry. Um, where we have the world, the world is t is writing all kinds of books to get our children's minds to sway left and Talk sway it. right. Talk. And it is so important. You know, I remember the first, when I asked, I said, Lord, I want to write. But uh, this was like after I wrote a few children's books. I was like, Lord, you know, what do you want me to write? And he said, the stories have already been written. All you have to do is put in a way for my people to understand, meaning the story of Daniel is a story that can be translated in so many different ways. And I said, Lord, I said, you know, your word is so true because there is nothing new under the sun. That's right. We are walking around with Daniel's of today. Joseph's of yes. today. Yes. Samuel's of today. Yes. Solomon's of today. And these are the people that need to share their story. And if you, and if you, and if you look at my story, there's a lot, there's, there's, um, I think it was, whose sister was raped in the Bible? I think like one of Joseph's, no, one of Jacob's daughters, I think, was raped in the Bible. Someone got to Dinah. Yeah, was, Dinah, was, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. One of, so there's rape, rape happening right, in the Bible. Right, right. And guess what? Infertility was in the Bible, That's right? Bible. So the yes. stories are, it's, it's right here. It's, it's still right, here. It's still here. We you know, I had a thought. I, I want to, this may sound a little deep, but I want to, I want to ask you, let me, mm. let me pick your brain a bit. Do you believe that, I, Okay, so we read the Bible, mm -hmm. and we see the same things happening today. Mm -hmm. Like, I call my dad a modern-day Joseph, the mm -hmm. same way. He was placed behind bars mm -hmm. innocently, mm -hmm. but then came out to the palace, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you believe that our stories are going to be written for people way down to read about us? So people in like way down are going to look at and say... Did, did you ever heard of the lady named L? Like it, it will almost be like a manuscript or like a Bible per se. Mm -hmm. And she stood for people that were raped and, and she stood for, do you believe that that would happen? I'm just saying. I definitely believe that because the reason why God, I believe God, um, why he's encouraging so many people to write yes. is because some people may not be able to relate to Joseph in 2000 BC, Talk it. AC and BC, yes. but they can relate to Akriba. Yes. And so that is why it's so important for us to write our stories. And we are just replicating what already happened because there's nothing new under the sun. This is so good. You have to write, listen, you have to document your history. If you want to take control of your narrative, what should you do? You should write it. Yes. You should write it. How about writing with faith and writing what, your what you want your expected end to be? How about trying that? This is what books do. This is what everything, what we have to do, we have to write it. Yes. We have to write the vision. Write the vision and, and make, make it plain. plain. We got to yes. write the vision and make it plain. And yes. so I encourage everybody to write a book. A lot of people, my story isn't, you know, but no. Even if you were born on a, to parents on a high rise, there were things that was happening in that house and in your life that I may have never experienced. But when you share your story, I am able to now get a little better knowledge about you and your upbringing. I was at this event and this guy was talking about the studio before Sawyer's studio. He was talking about a studio. I forget what, he's, mm -hmm. what the name was. He said that the studio was around a long time. And he said only the Caucasian folks went to that studio and all the black folks went to Sawyer's studio. And I told him, I said, well, I never heard of that studio. So I went to Google and I Googled the name. I can't remember the name right now. And I couldn't find it. And he said, I said, you have to write that book. I said, because that's part of Bohemian history that I don't even know about. Oh my God. This is why it it's important to write your book because there are people that are going to be who are going to come after us that want to know you know how the Bahamas was before, before me before me like how it was before all of this technology because you know we go in that technology age it's mm -hmm. gonna look so much, so much different, different. Yes. how is it and this is why it's important for us to write books because we're documenting history you may not look at it as a big thing but it is a big thing your story is going to impact so many lives but now that you say that L I was driving the other day and just looking at this particular they were breaking down something just mm -hmm. there on Saunders Beach. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, so many people left and they didn't see this. Mm -hmm. Like, this has changed from my my dad's time, mm -hmm. from my grandparents' time. And there's truly, there's not enough for us to see it. Yeah. I mean, for me to show Skylar what this place looks like way back when, because sometimes my dad would be like, yeah, where the old banana boat used to be. And I'd be like, banana boat like you understand what i'm <laughs> yeah. saying so 
I think that documenting, like you say, yeah. that's powerful because every, anyone could just write a book, but the importance of writing the book is what yeah. people need to know why you need to write. Yeah. And everyone has a book on the inside of everyone. them. Everyone. It's even for their bloodline. Yeah. There's a book that you should write for the people to come behind you to see, well, wow, look what happened in our family. Mm -hmm. That's powerful, Elle. Yeah, that's really that's powerful. It's really, it's really so powerful. you're pushing a lot of authors, and I know that you had a book fair mm -hmm. uh, where you were pushing mm -hmm. Bahamian mm -hmm. authors. How did that go? The book fair went well. Um, I didn't do it. I did it in 20, that was 2021. Mm -hmm. I didn't, no, that's 2022. I didn't do it in 2023. But um, we created a Facebook group for Bahamian authors and the, and the group is growing. Wow. It's really growing because we have, we are able to, we have been able to go to a lot of the private schools to do book readings and sell books. A lot of pop-up shop we've been doing and we're working on something. So hopefully the next time I come to this couch, I'm going to have some Better news to share, of course, um, as relates to books. But we have a group on Facebook, Bohemian Authors, mm -hmm. where a lot of authors we just we, we share whatever information we have as relates to publishing. Um, we share information on different pop up shops and different um, schools that are looking for authors to come uh, come in. And so the group is growing. And so I I I, I'm, I have positive. A positive feel about that. I feel good about that. Good about Let's that. talk about some of these books quickly, Elle, before mm -hmm. I ask you the other good thing, because mm -hmm. you are also, what do you call those people? You you interview, you you sat oh. with many people. Oh, okay. uh, we can get to that in a minute. But what does Decoded the Message, Decoded the Message, everyone, by Elle Clark, what is this book about? That book is about dreams. Now, from when I was a little girl, God would always, he'll always give me dreams. And I am not, I am, I would say, in the intermediate level as to how to interpret dreams however i a lot of people used to message me about you know about their dreams and it's some one thing i had to tell them first of all a lot of times it's so easy to to shift god or the picture and put a person there no don't come to me no, talk no. right that's right don't come to me no that's right no, no 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 go to god first yes and if god leads you to me yes. then you come to me and i had to stop stop because i realize that people keep coming a lot and i'll be like no 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 no. i'm not I, the interpretation doesn't come from me yes. it comes from god yes and the first step as it relates to dream interpretation is go to the bible yes go to the bible go to the bible because a lot of the because most times dreams are metaphoric and a lot of the symbols that is in your dreams you can go to the bible and kind of figure Oh, mm. a lot of stuff. And so this book is only, it is, I use I like it decoding. the Bible, mm -hmm. the Bible to guide me as to how to interpret my dreams. Yes. And people have to understand that before you go and buy a book, before you go and ask a person, pray about it and go to the Bible because that's a very, that's a very, I, I look at dreams as a sacred, it's a sacred space and it's very important because there are so many things that God gave me in dreams that shifted my life. Yes. And so when people tell me their dreams and when I hear dreams, I take it very seriously yes, because I know that God gives you blueprints in dreams. He has given me a lot of direction just yes. through dreams. Yes. When I left my job and I left the Royal Palmas Police Force, I left from a dream, but I had that dream pro probably 10 years before it actually happened. And so we have to also understand that sometimes dreams, the fulfillment of it may not be today. It may be 20 years down the line that's or it. five years down the line. And so that's why it's so important for you to take them seriously. Yes. Go to God first. Yes. Go to the Bible. And if he leads you to a book or a person, then you go. Yes. Because it's so easy for you to make that person a God in your life. If you know yes. what I'm saying. Because it's easy access. Yeah. So I could just get this information, yeah. especially if you know that the person has a strength yeah. in interpreting dreams. But yeah. we know that the interpretation comes, comes from, from Holy God. Spirit. God. Yes. And you have and to rely on that. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. you can't afford to. And like you say, it's like the blueprint. It's, it's blueprint. like, it's definitely the blueprint. And he shows you so much signs. That was powerful. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're in the, ch I remember when this happened, the Sister Squad. Yeah. I remember when Elle produced this book. Yeah. Uh, any parents interested in, in good books for their kids? And guess what? Kiki, yeah. up in this joint. Oh, yeah. Okay? Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> I think Elle does. But tell us about Sister Squad. I remember this. Is that something to do with your kids? Sister Squad, yes. Each one of the girls represent one of my daughters. Right? Yes. But when I wrote when I wrote the book, it was during, we were in the U.S., and it was during the time when a lot of racism was happening. And my children, they went to school that predominantly 
Caucasian or Spanish. And so um, the book speaks about three, three girls. They're not sisters. One is Chinese, one is an African American, and one is Caucasian. And they, through their differences, they show the community how our differences make us great and how our differences bring us together. And so that's what Sister Squad is all about. They're not biological sisters, but they are friends, and they're all of a different race yes. and nationality. And yes. they showed the town how their differences made them so great and why it made them I'm such good friends and they should do the same because the town were going they was going through some little racial issues um but through these sisters through these friends they were able to bring the town together and so that's what that book is about i have l going through these books so people could catch on to why i'm having you to explain this because mm -hmm. everything that you've experienced mm -hmm. or you you see that you're putting it in a writing book. to help a somebody else yeah. this is powerful and then welcome to the world little one prayers for the NICU. yes Oh, uh, like this really touched my heart, y'all. Prayers for the NICU babies. Yeah. Like this is this is so needed. Yeah. This is L. This is your child will do great and mighty things in Jesus' name. This is this is powerful. What 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 really made you write this book? A prayer for these NICU babies. This one definitely was Holy Spirit inspired because I haven't experienced having a child in the NICU ward. And so when the idea came to me, I was like, Lord, now hold on. I have no experience in this area. And he said, I just need you to write prayers. Use the biblical scriptures for people who are experiencing this, who are going through this. And that's exactly what I did in this particular book. Like every time someone touches it, oh my goodness, I wish I had it when my child was in the NICU ward. Or I'm going to have to show my doctor this or my nurse this because, this because parents are always needing something. Like there was a lady that said that her nurse wrote down scriptures on a paper and gave it to her during the time my daughter was in the NICU ward. And I was like, wow, she said, you could imagine if she had this book. And so this book is definitely Holy Spirit inspired because I don't even have a personal, I don't have a personal experience with that. And so I say, okay, God, but if you say write it, I'm going to write it. And I've seen the blessing um, come through this book because of my obedience. So, wow. I'm glad I so you do issue these to women yes. that are, oh, yes. This touched me because I, 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 I am aware of women that had babies in the NICU and lost them. Wow. And, you know, it, 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 it's hard. It's hard, especially especially during COVID when people were not yeah. able to see their babies. And, oh, hell, it's needed. Lily's lost balloon and son of the sun. Now, let me take a guess. Son of the sun got to be some little Bahamian guy talking yes. about yes. sun, sun, and sea, right? No. So this, okay. I wish I had I as a Bahamian princess because that is the male version. And that is like one of my... I is a Bahamian princess. A Bahamian princess. So it's an empowerment poem. It's an empowerment poem for Bahamians. And this one is an empowerment poem for Bahamian boys to just let them know that they are valued. Because a lot of times we overlook the boys. There's always the girls being pushed and, you know, pushed in those areas. But our young boys, our young men also need to know that they are valuable and that they are, that we see them. Because I, so, I think it's so important for us to see each other. Yes. You know, you can look at someone, but you're not seeing them. You're looking at the outside, but you don't see the potential on the inside of me. And so that's what um, Son of the Sun is about. And I, the Bohemian Princess, does the exact same thing, but for a female, but for a little girl to let her know, listen, out, a princess for the Bahamas is not the princess in England. You know, we bake, we cook, we clean, we, we, we climb trees, yes. we play marbles. Yes. So it's in the Bohemian version, but also to uplift um, Bohemian girls and women to let them know that you are special and we see you. And the illustration is so beautiful in this, L. We were talking earlier before the show. Mm -hmm. Don't let us in on everything, but the illustration is, is partially you. Yes, 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 yes. L yes. is also an yes. illustrator, guys. Yes. Yes. This is powerful. And Lily's lost balloon. It just talks about um, a little girl that lost a balloon and really about, you know, just it takes me back to when children were children because it seems as though we want to rush them to into a, adulthood. adulthood. We have to let them be children. And so that's what this book is about, about a little girl that lost a balloon, but she eventually found it. It teaches you about loss. It teaches you about grief in a playful way and how to deal with it. This is good, especially that clothing. You know, I, I have to say, I don't want to call the online store, but mm -hmm. even the way they dress the kids now today mm -hmm. is kind of different. So mm -hmm. it's, it's taking them into adulting yeah. very early and it's and you know we grow up and then we'd be like we wish we were, were yeah you know mm -hmm. and then that's of a course, coloring activity book l has my friends are animals uh and uh, coloring activity book and the donuts the do nots yes i see that yes. i got it i got yes. it yes. the do nots of friendship yeah. 
Talk about that. This one right here. The, the do nots of friendship. Of friendship. Um, you know what I'm realizing? Um, as I remember when I was younger, I was I subscribed to that no new friends mentality, right? And that is so toxic. That is so because God created us for community. Yes. And so when I wrote this book, this was just to I, I did play on the word donuts, but it's actually donuts of friendship. Uh -huh. And it goes through and tells you everything that you shouldn't do as a friend. You shouldn't make fun of them. You shouldn't laugh at them. You should support them. And it goes along with that. And I actually have a, a new book that is coming out. Um the burn book. If you have watched me and girls, you have watched me and girls. And they had like this burn book. I don't watch TV. This this old though, old. Like when you was a teenager, I didn't have a, the privilege no? of watching the TV. Oh my Daddy, goodness. you see that? I know you're going to watch this. Now I'm being asked about the TV again. I had no TV. No? No. And so I don't watch TV. That was me when I Mean girls. Canada. Mean girls. Mm. Um, it's a book. It's a story about these, you know, popular girls and they were mean, right? Mm -hmm. And they had this book called The Burn Book. And in The Burn Book, they would write nasty things about their classmates, all mm -hmm. the things, all the things. And so I wrote a book titled... Me um, the burn book, but navigating friendships with wisdom. So it's a reverse to that book. And the reason why I wrote that book, because I realized that as I'm getting older, I'm understanding the importance of friendship and the importance of wholesome relationships that are platonic. And I feel as though, um, we have polluted that in a sense where everybody feel like they're an Island and they could do everything on their own. But God is showing me the importance of community, community. preach. You need community. You, you need, need it. And, and so our minds have to be rewired as it relates yes. to friendship. Yes. And a lot of the things that we learned is we're still holding on to a friendship that hurt us or someone that did us wrong. Yeah. And, and I understand that God has given us provision for our feelings, but yes. He says, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. So that means that there's a time limit yes. that you can be upset or angry. And, and so the book is designed to especially tell women. I share stories of missteps that I had that I did um, when I was someone's friend, things that I did wrong, and how I am able to see now how, how some of those toxic traits came into my life, how I, I, I kept, I held on to some of those things. And so I, I am so now at where I am now, I understand and appreciate friendship, good friendship, because God did not create us to be an island. He created us for community. Yes. And we have to nurture our community because a lot of people don't understand that it's about reciprocity. You can't expect someone to, to be there for you all the time, but you're never there for them. You can't expect them to tell you, compliment you and uplift you, but you're never empowering them. And so we have to understand reciprocity as well. You water, whatever you water will grow, whatever you don't water will die. Yes. And so we, we talk a lot about that. And so that book should be released in, in, in late February, late this month. And so, um, I just believe in, I, I think it's important when God give you a revelation, whether you share it with one person or two, whether you do a video, yes. whether you start a podcast or a show, whether you write a book, that revelation is not just for you. It's so, so so that somebody else can get through. And so that's, that's, I'm just doing his will to the best of my ability. And I pray See. that people are inspired by it and that they and use their own to, story to help others. It's all about you know, paying it forward. Me writing this book is paying it forward to someone else who may have experienced that or gone through that or caused them not to be in that situation and begin to pray. Because even before the incident happened, the Lord gave me a dream. I had a dream where... I was in my bedroom and a guy came into my room with a knife, right? And I woke up. Let's say about three weeks later, the same thing happened. He came in my room, just how he came in the room in the dream. And if he was alive today, he could tell you what I said. I was like, wow, this actually happening. Wow. That's the first thing I said. Wow, this is actually happening. Because in that dream, God was warning me. I wasn't safe at the time, but God was warning me. You know, not to stay at home. Uh, don't, you know, like there was a, he was like, get out, get right. out, get out, get out. But I didn't listen and I stayed. And when it happened, I was like, you know, even in my book, I say, you know what? I can't blame anyone because I know for a fact, God was wanting me. When I got up, when I saw the guy come into my room with the knife, I said, wow, it's actually happening because God gave me a dream. And this is why I tell people, pay attention to your dreams. You do get dreams from God, the enemy or your flesh. 
But the way that you're able to identify where that dream has come from is go to the word of yes. God. Oh God. That's how you're going to be able to determine yes. where that dream came from. Your dreams lead you. God speaks to you in dreams. We know yes. all throughout the Bible, God spoke to Joseph, he spoke, Daniel. Yes. He yes. spoke in dreams. And so that yes. is why you should write your dreams down because in that God is giving you codes. He is giving you strategies. He's giving you plans. He's warning you about people yes. in your life. He's telling you about people that may come in your life so that you don't ward off the good people in your life. And so he's giving you He's giving you the unction to function through your dream. So take those very seriously. From a dream, through a dream, we moved to the U.S. Through a dream. A dream. And God My brought God. the people that were in the dream to move us to the U.S. My God. Through a dream, God led me to a company where I was able to make 10 less. I needed money. I needed some money and God, and I made $10,000 in a month from a dream oh that's why i take my dreams very seriously we ought to we yes. ought to martin luther king had a dream yes. and you see what it did it truly restructured the way things look yes. in america and even now in this time aunt l you know the bible says in the last days yes. he will pour out his spirit upon all, all flesh, flesh. Yes. and we're seeing now that people are dreaming like never before yes. and the dream realm is extremely active yes you know and so i love that right there paying attention to your dreams yes. because God is speaking. Yes. He is speaking and visions. Yes. He, he is vision. speaking. Yes. He is speaking. Before we wrap up Al, cause I know time is on us now. I just want to get in there quickly. You did a lot of interviews and blogs and on, on the red carpet on tell us just a little bit about how did you get on doing all of that? Well, Al? Cause you're, you're super busy. Um, I mean, you are super busy. Have, how did you get doing that? You interviewed Mary, Mary, MC light, the um, all of these I've, people. I've how did you make this connect and, and what encouraged you to do that? God. My God. God. Um, I've always, like I said, from I was in, in primary school, I always wanted to write. So writing, I, I wrote for The Guardian. The Guardian had a youth edition section. Mm -hmm. I wrote for The Guardian. Um, then there was this teen scene thing that they used to have. I was a part of that organization as well. Um, and so writing, I went to COB, was COB at the time, it's Ubi now, for journalism and mass communication. And so when I moved to the U.S. from a dream, another dream, the Lord gave me I Am Queen magazine in a dream. And he showed me it was Lucinda Cross at the Lucinda Cross. I interviewed. She was the first person to be on the cover of the magazine. Wow. I interviewed Lucinda Cross, um, and the Lord told me the name of the magazine. I googled it to see if anybody else had that name. No one else had that name. I said okay. And so honestly, it was just through being obedient to him. I remember the first publication I wrote for was the Huffington Post, and I remember when I applied applied for it. Right, the Lord woke me up. And he said, I need you to apply to be a contributor to the Huffington Post. I did it. And probably that afternoon, I got an email directly from Ariana Huffington. And she was in charge of the Huffington Post at the time and saying that she, okay, she loved the story. She'd like to publish it and I could become a contributing author. Do you know that within one week, she resigned and sold the company? Wow. Within what, if I didn't do what God told me to do, I would have never gotten into that door. In one week after she accepted me, and I still was able to write for them. So I was in the door, and no, and they closed the door to all contributors, contributing writers at that point. So after the Huffington Post, through the Huffington Post, that opened the door for me to be accepted to the Stella Awards. Um, I was able to do some BT and Essence events as well. I interviewed, I was able to um, film and interview even secular artists, um, Cardi B. Yes. Um, who else? Brandy, um, Jagged Edge, and a lot. Some people I'm missing right now. Um, Mary Mary, um, Kelly Price, um, MC Light, and a lot of different people. But it was only through the obedience of God because my numbers was in there. Number one, they look at your numbers first. My numbers weren't there. I wasn't known to my magazine, wasn't on the essence level, but I, that's why I can tell you that only God opened those doors for me. And it was through obedience, through the obedience from a dream. Go and ask and go and email uh, Huffington Post and see if they'll accept you, right? I gone, I did it. She emailed me. The, and normally, Ariana doesn't email people. There would be someone from a team. She said, I love the story. We're going to put you on a script. Oh, oh, oh. Through that, God opened the door for everything else. And in one week, if I had waited a week to email her, I would not have gotten in because in one week, she sold her company and started up something else. I truly believe that God is setting up marketplace apostles and prophets, and yeah. he's putting his kingdom people 
in different areas um you know we have to be able to exist in in the world we're gonna yeah. be amongst people that don't know jesus but mm -hmm. our assignment is to get them to know by what we yeah. do so we have to be competitive so i truly believe that's how you're being used yeah. in the marketplace because at first i was confusing because i, I was like god now hold on as a christian how, how like, I, I, I get mixing up with these like, people how, right how how I it's go, a strategy yeah like how i going and i did the super bowl i did the super bowl when, when it was in miami as well i was a part of the super bowl team i also did with oprah when she did i was a part of a media team and she came to florida to do her what yes to do her that like that was crazy it's a strategy yes it's a strategy so i was like okay lord whatever you're doing but i remember a lady at essence uh, i was standing in the in the waiting room just waiting on the guests to come so we can interview and she just keep looking at me and she said she said there's something there's some just keep it there's something different about you like it's something it, it, that's why she kept saying it's something different about you and that and that's when the lord said to me yes i have you here for a purpose that's it. you don't completely understand why but i have you here for a purpose you're in the marketplace and that's 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 see, so people can't look at it and be like okay i'll say she's a christian but look what she doing yeah, no yeah. Mm -hmm. he got you there for a reason yeah. god is good he's truly good yes l we could yes. talk all day but yes. of course we gotta wrap up you got to come back yes all right mm -hmm. you gotta come back so we can finish there's so much more that we can talk about but before we go i want you to take it away and just share something whatever the Lord is laying on your heart right now to the audience your pain is going to lead you to your purpose I know it don't feel that way right now I know that all hell may be breaking loose in your life but I want you to know that your pain is going to lead you to your purpose I never would have guessed in a million years that the rape that I experienced the molestation that I experienced would lead me as far as the Senate me how God, when God told me in the shower that he allowed me to walk through it because I have the ability to bear it and share it, I did not understand then, but I understand now how Romans 8 and 28 has now been manifested in my life. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, and God can do the same thing for, me, for you. Listen, there's nothing special about me. God has given us all the same opportunities. I know it may seem as though some people may. You know, I get it, but I want you to know that your story, that's where the gold is at. Your story is what God wants to use for his glory. Yes. Write it down. Just write it. You don't have to think, don't think about anything. Don't think about how you're going to publish it. Don't think about the editing. Don't think about anything else. Just start to write your story down. Start to journal it out. And as you begin to walk it out in obedience, that's when God begins to open the door. See, God doesn't open the door for you when you're sitting down thinking about it. He opens the door when you start to walk it out. And as you walk it out, you, he'll begin to connect you with the publisher or the illustrator or the person that's going to help you to market your book. He begins to connect the dots once you start moving. You can't see nothing if you stand still. The only thing you're going to see is the things that are right around you. But as you begin to drive forward, you're going to see a new building here, a different building there, and this here. And that's how God is going to connect the dots for you. But I want you to know that your story is not insignificant. You are not insignificant. God has something special for you. You are queen. You are king. And God wants to use your story for his glory. I don't care what you've done yesterday. I don't care where you came from. I don't care about what your parents told you. I don't care who told you you couldn't make it. If God be for you. Who on earth, who on earth can be against you? Your story has power. Your story, God wants to use you. You, he wants to use your story for his glory. I don't, listen, I want you to get those limited thoughts out of your mind. You can do this, you can do that, because the Bible tells me I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. me. And that scripture isn't just for L, that's for everyone. God just say, whoever believes in, whosoever believes in him whosoever are you a whosoever today oh my god. god is saying you could put your name right there l i am going to believe in him so that i may have life and have it more abundantly but god promises us to live abundantly on this earth too and through your pain that is going to lead you to your purpose god is going to use that not only for his glory but to show you just how much god he is Everything that you want, everything that you desire, God has the ability to give it to you. And he wants to. But he needs you to give it all to him so that when he gives it back to you, it's something brand new. Amen. Amen. I love it, Elle. Amen. Amen, El. Thank you once again for coming and sitting with me. I hope to see you again. Continue to be the light that the world needs to see. Continue to be the light that the world needs to see. And I look forward to the good news that you'll bring back to the couch Amen. when we meet again. 
Until the next episode, thank you for joining us tonight. May the peace of God be with you always. Amen. It is our prayer that you are blessed by this episode. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications of new uploads. God bless. Guys, I just had an amazing time with Faith Talk with Akriva and her team. This has been an amazing experience. One thing I can definitely say about this show is that the anointing of God is here. Listen, if you want your life to be transformed, if you, listen, if you're looking for a new direction, Faith Talk is where to be. Do you have a life story to share that you know only God could have brought you out? One that can change someone's life for the better. Become a guest on Faith Talk by emailing faithtalklive7 at gmail.com or send a direct message on Instagram at faith underscore talk underscore. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey, I'm Naj. And I'm Sam. We trust that you've been enjoying the episodes each week. The team have been working overtime to ensure that you, our viewers, have something to boost your faith. That's absolutely correct. Each episode is unique in its own way, but there's one message that remains the same, and that is Jesus. With so much more to come, we wanted to extend an invitation for those wanting to become a sponsor. This is a great opportunity to promote your business, ministry, or an upcoming event. Or maybe you just want to sow a faith seed into the ministry and be a part of what God is doing with this platform. You can sow a faith seed weekly, monthly, or however the Lord places it in your heart on PayPal. For more information on how to become a sponsor, feel free to email us at faithtalklive7 at gmail.com. Until then, keep, keep your, your faith, faith up. up.